DSSF Hey all, uh, it's been a while since I've actually posted a tutorial for Chipsynthes FC. Uh, I just wanted to post something about how to make drum kits. I was going to do this a couple weeks ago, but I got busy unfortunately. Sorry about that. Um, so basically when you're doing drum kits, what you want to do is make sure that you're in mono mode. The reason, mono timbre mode. The reason is because if you put it in poly mode, it treats every SNES channel layer as an, an actual MIDI channel. Um, and that's not what we want for a drum kit. So for a drum kit, um, you're going to have each layer, but you're going to have each drum hit on each each layer. So technically, if you're doing the drum kits the way I'm saying, you should only be able to load eight samples. I've got more than eight here, but I'm, I'm just going to do a few. So I've got a Kurzweil K1200 drum kit here. Um, the sharp of hearing might know that that drum kit is also used for the Final Fantasy IV Super Nintendo game. Um, so here we got the kick drum in, in the first sample slot. Uh, I'm going to shut off auto assign because whenever I switch different samples, it's going to mess up my layers. So I'm just going to set it to none. So we got a kick drum. Um, what I'm going to do is set up the kick drum to be on one of the C, the C, uh, notes. I'm not exactly sure which numbers are which on the keyboard here so but we'll we'll try it out we'll see what happens um so let's try putting kick into one we got we're gonna shut off the echo i don't think i have echo set anyways but it's fine um that's too low too low there we go so that's the default c for the kick drum so to set this to one specific note what you want to do is set the low key and the high key now, Chipsynth allows you to overlap them, but it doesn't do it in software. So the interface might let you go, say, I got A flat two here, but you could technically go past that. See, and this doesn't really make any sense. So technically in software, it's only going to A flat two on this side. Um, I just wanted to let you know that uh, even though it shows that, you might still want to be aware of that so that you don't accidentally confuse yourself when you're trying to set these samples up. So I'm going to try to set it to C3. That's the one I want. I forget which MIDI number C3 is, so I'm just going to use my mouse wheel to go up to C3. It's 48, so we'll just use 48. I'm pretty sure MIDI kick is probably C2. Let's, let's actually set it to C2 then. That's 36. Okay, so now our kick drum is only playing on note 36, which is a very low C. But you can hear it's very low, low pitched. So what you want to do is change the chorus to tune that sample. So I went down, what, three octaves? What's that? I think it's 36. Yeah, so 36. Typically a kick drum is pan center, but you can also set the panning by, you know, just checking the layer and changing the pan for that layer. I'm just going to keep it center. So we got our kick drum set up. Let's set up our, our snare drum. And this is the hard snare. I can't, I can't test it right now because all of my things are set. So if I go to channels, I'll set number two to my snare. You can see snare set there. Um, so usually the snare is either E or D or E. I think D is usually the, the softer snare. E is usually the harder snare. So if I set that to, what was that again, 36, 36, this is just the faster way that I do it. Then I use the mouse wheel to go up to E. So I've got a kick, I've got a snare. But everything is tuned to C. Um, if your samples are actually tuned to the sample rate, then what you might want to do is actually set your auto rate to file. For kick, it's already set, but we'll set it to file again. Um, and that's just going to tune your samples automatically to how they were set in the actual sample rate. So now if I... See, that's messed up my tuning, so I'm just going to set that to 24. I think that's just an octave too high. There we go. Now if I hit snare, no luck. So if I go... I think it's 24. Oops, I'm in the wrong program. 24. So it's just a little bit too high. 
I'm just going to count. So this is where 44, 100 would be. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I go negative 4 on the tuning on this, 1, 2, 3, 4, my snare should be in tune. And it is. So we got a kick and a snare set now. Now I'm going to set up my closed hi-hat. And my opened hi-hat. Actually, let's set that to my pedaled hi-hat. And then opened hi-hat. Um, same thing, we're just going to, I'll just set this to, I think it's, I'll just set it to 45 for now. Actually, that's not the right note anyways. So it's going to be, closed hi-hat is going to be F sharp. Pedaled hi-hat is going to be G sharp. I guess they show it as A flat. Um, 44, so I'm just going to put 44. And then opened hi-hat is going to be A sharp. Or B flat, I guess. There we go. Now, the way chip synths keys are set, you can't really see see them activated because the black keys are set to black and any disabled keys are set to a black alpha. So you can't really check to see if they're active or not. So hopefully in the a future ver version of chip synth, um, they'll change the disabled highlights to maybe gray or something. And that, at least then you'll be able to tell which ones are active and which ones aren't. But you can hear they're playing, but same thing, they're, they're not, they're not um, tuned properly. So I'm going to set them to 24. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm going to go down, or go up 6. That's up 6. 7, 8, so I'm just going to go up 8, so that's 30, 38, and I think this is probably just going to be 40, just based on logic. So if I click this, no, I'm down, I'm off. Okay, these sounds are like ingrained in my soul, so I know exactly how they sound. There we go. Okay, and... Oh, you know why they're not tuning properly is because I didn't set them to file. So that's the same thing. You want to set them to file so that you can set them to the file tuning. I'm glad I made that mistake. Okay, so let's try that again. So let's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm going to set that to 24. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so twenty four minus eight. That's still too high. Oh, I think I might be changing the wrong one. That's probably why. Okay, so 24, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 24, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's perfect. And this is going to be minus 10. So 24, so that's 14. Perfect. So here's where I can set the panning. So I'm going to set the panning to 75. 75, 75. Now, if you're doing authentic Super Nintendo drums, um, so we do have poly set to eight here, but when doing authentic Super Nintendo drums, typically you'd be using one voice for each style of drum hit, like a kick and a snare. And at that point, you might want to set your MIDI sequence so that you don't overlap notes. It's technically how it might work well, not for hi-hats, but on Super Nintendo, a kick and a snare would be on the same channel. So what you might want to do is cut your snare's notes and cut your kick's notes, each and every one of them, before the next note starts. If you want to go the extra mile for Super Nintendo music, 
you may want to cut a few ticks off the ends of each note. So that's how you would set up drum kits in mono timbrel mode. Um, if you wanted to set it up in poly timbrel mode, you technically can. Uh, the fastest way to do it would be uh, setting... Um, yeah, just going to set up poly timbrel mode here. Okay, so the fastest way to do it would be to go to the matrix menu. Add a modulation, set the key. You probably won't see this pop up, but the MIDI key range. And set the key track to poly. You don't need function. And destination would be set to the layers slash channel where you want the effect to change. And then set it to sample. We're going to have to re-enable the keys by changing the key range to setting the low to zero and the high to 127. Yeah. So now whenever I change the notes... So you might have to change the tuning, of course. So let's change the tuning back to auto. Back to auto. And then to auto. 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 And back to channel. So my drums are all out of tune, of course, but it, you can hear each note is playing a different sample. And to tune it this time, what you would have to do is actually tune it in the file. So we set it to file, but you can set it to custom, and then you can set your own sample rate. So if you know how to tune that, or if you have another program that can change the tune um, based on semitones and everything, um, maybe like use a tracker, or if you're using a sound font editor or something like that, and you know what the sample rate is per note, you could just put it in yourself. And at that point, you're you're tuning the samples. The problem with this, though, is that you can't... You can see how it's modulating the sample. You can't really modulate the panning unless you set another key range matrix to do that. Um, but there's there's a little bit of work you'll have to get it at to get it going for poly mode. It works okay if you know... Like, you'll need to practice a bit to get it working. It works okay if you set it correctly, you can see my RAM's like way over Super Nintendo limits. Um, it's really hard to set it up that way if you're trying to be hardware accurate. The thing is, Chipsynth SFC doesn't output to hardware at this time, so there's really no point in doing it that way. Uh, if you want to do it that way, just to have it ready in case Chipsynth SFC ever does have out a hardware output, uh, it could be set up that way and you can use it for the future. But it's something that you might want to avoid if you're just trying to output to an MP3 or a WAV file or something. Anyways, so that's how you make drum kits. You can also use this method for making splits and multi-sample instruments. I'm going to make another video after this how to make splits and multi-sample instruments, but the concept is exactly the same. So I just wanted to walk you through this just so that you know how you do it. If you have any questions, let me know. If you like what you see, send me a like. It helps me out. Subscribe. Shoot me a message on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at TSSF. I hope you have a great day, and, and we'll see you later. Bye.